Psychology of Wrong Work The idea is that man is a machine and not one. He is not one in that he has many eyes, and he is not one in that he does not have one mind. It is not so hard to verify this idea when you start observing your behaviour from the point of view of the system. One way this lack of unity is best seen in the way the different centres work. Every centre is designed to a certain type of work, but centres very rarely do the work they were designed to do. Almost every instance, one or another centre leaves his own work and tries to do the work of another centre. For instance, moving centre can, up to a point, imitate the work of intellectual centre, but it can only produce very vague and disconnected thoughts. In its turn, the intellectual centre can work for the moving centre. Try to write, for instance, thinking about every letter you are going to write and how you will write it. The instinctive centre works for the emotional centres when, for instance, you try to eat away your anxiety or boredom. The emotional centre can do wrong work for the intellectual centre when you are trying to take a sensible decision based on a strong emotion. The intellectual centre can do the work of the instinctive centre, although it can only do a very small part of its work, for instance, when you are voluntarily controlling your breathing. It is not so hard to see that many of our problems are a product of wrong work of centres. So why do centres start interfering with the work of other centres? The biological explanation for this phenomena is to make sure that the work of centres is continued and to protect the machine against sudden interruptions, because interruptions can be fatal. When centres start to work rightly though, it is possible to calculate the work of the machine and to foresee and foretell many future responses in the machine. This gives you some ability to direct your thoughts, feelings and actions, which is a breakthrough in your mechanicalness. For ordinary man life, it's practically filled with only wrong work of centres, our dull impressions, our vague impressions, our lack of impressions, our slow understanding of many things. Very often our identifying and our considering, even our lying, all these depend on the wrong work of centres. It is necessary to study and observe the wrong work of centres. It is necessary to know all kinds of wrong work and the particular features of the wrong work belonging to particular functions. It is impossible to know oneself without knowing one's defects and wrong features. And, in addition to the general defects belonging to everyone, each of us has his own particular defects belonging only to himself, and they also have to be observed and verified. Our insufficient understanding of ourselves and the wrong work of our machine is by itself an example of wrong work of the intellectual centre. In order to get our machine to do the right work, we need to start to examine our ways of thinking. The work starts in intellectual centre, directing our thoughts through the new way of thinking that the system of the fourth way provides. We will, eventually, be able to correct the wrong work of the emotional centre, which is the source of almost all wrong work of centres. We cannot change the workings of emotional centre by just feeling in a different way, only by thinking in a new way, which is the first step in defying the powers of the machine. Wrong work of the emotional centre shows itself either in having too many mechanical emotions and having no control over them, or by being cut off your emotions, not being emotional enough. When one starts to think in a new way about one's emotions, a new quality of feeling will emerge. This quality of emotions will not distract you from realising your potential, but guide and motivate you to unleash your internal and authentic potential.